Who the heck is that fat, fuzzy, football-shaped creature swimming in the river? If you'd like to find out, then this is the video for you. Hello, my name is Justin Smith and I work as an interpretive naturalist with the Huron-Clinton Metro Park here out of the Oakwoods Metro Park Nature Center. Thank you for joining me today because the Metro Parks have entered into a really exciting partnership with the Detroit Riverfront Conservancy. And to celebrate this partnership in this video series, we're gonna meet some of the animals that you can discover not only here in the Metro Parks, but also along the Detroit Riverfront, especially if you're in a place like the Ralph C. Wilson Centennial Park. Now, behind me, this Huron River flows all the way out to Lake Erie, and so does the Detroit River. So whether you're standing here in the Metro Parks or whether you're along the Detroit Riverfront, you are in the Lake Erie watershed. It's the home for so many of us and we're here to take care of it and to enjoy learning more about it. Now today's animal is the muskrat. Now the muskrat is an amazing aquatic mammal. By mammal, I mean it's an animal that's covered in fur. And by aquatic, I mean it loves to be in the water. And that's usually where we see muskrats swimming out in our lakes and our rivers, our streams and our ponds. And this is an animal that's adapted for this aquatic life. It has this ridiculously soft waterproof fur that keeps it warm in the water. It has a third eyelid called a nictitating membrane. It's a clear eyelid that works like built-in swim goggles. Its back feet are webbed, just like a duck's, to propel it through the water. And this is an animal that also has an incredible appetite for aquatic plants, especially cattails and bulrushes and arrowheads. Now, muskrat has a rat in the name, but it's not a rat. It has a long, skinny, naked tail like a rat, and it's in the rodent family like a rat, but the muskrat, it's its own creature. It's a muskrat. But speaking of mistaking the muskrat for another creature, this is what usually happens when somebody sees a muskrat, and they're not used to seeing muskrats. It goes something kind of like this. Hey, look! It's a beaver! Now, the muskrat is not a beaver. I mean, they're both aquatic mammals in the rodent family, and where you can find a beaver, a lot of times you can also find a muskrat, but they're not the same animal. First, the size. A muskrat's a little guy. It's kind of like a fat, fuzzy football. It's only about two to five pounds. Here, go long! I'm just kidding. You don't throw a muskrat. A beaver is about the size of an elementary school student. No, really! Most are in the 40 to 60 pound range, which is as much as my second grader right here. Although some males can push the 100 pound mark. Here are their pelts for comparison. This is the muskrat. This is the beaver. If you see a beaver swimming through the water, it's like a mid-sized dog, like some of these pit bulls out there dog paddling through the water. A muskrat, a uh, muskrat's more like a sleek little chihuahua out there. Actually, it's better looking because it's a muskrat. Next, the tail. When you see a beaver's wide, flat, scaly tail, you know you're looking at a beaver. The only tricky thing is when a beaver's swimming in the water, usually the tail's below the surface and you can't see it. By contrast, the muskrat's tail is narrow and skinny and it's flattened from side to side because the muskrat uses its tail not for propulsion, but like a rudder to help it go straight in the water. And the best thing is when a muskrat's swimming, you can usually see that tail bobbing right up by the surface. And finally, the lodge. Now, the lodge is another word for the muskrat or the beaver's home because they both build a lodge out into the wetland and it's made out of plant matter. Now, muskrats, not only do they love to eat cattails and other aquatic plants, but they use them to make their lodge. So if that big mound is mostly made out of plant material, it might have a few little sticks here and there, but most of it is cattails and other plants, you're looking at a muskrat lodge. Instead, if you see that big mound and it's mostly made out of larger sticks, maybe mud and logs and even stones, you know you're looking at the lodge of a beaver. And by the way, beaver don't actually eat wood. They use the logs and large sticks as construction material. The only part they're actually eating is the cambium layer, which is this living tissue right under the bark. And you can see how much cambium this beaver is eating right here. The problem is, even for a beaver, Cambium's kind of hard to digest, so they do eat their own poop, so they have a chance to digest it a second time. Muskrats, by contrast, don't eat their own poop. Since they're eating more succulent plant matter, it's a little easier to digest, and kind of like us, they only digest their food 
one time. And speaking of poop, it is time for a poop break. Because mammals can be really sneaky, but sometimes we can tell they've been there by the signs they've left behind, including their poop. Now, a scientist might call it scat, and you can look for muskrat scat on top of rocks and logs right along the edges of the water. Now, muskrats are primarily herbivores, which means they mostly eat plants. And if you are somebody who eats plants, your poop tends to come out in little tiny pellets. Here are the pellets from a white-tailed deer, and these are the pellets from an eastern cottontail rabbit, which are two of our other herbivores. Just remember, plant eaters poop pellets. So thank you for joining us today as we learn about the muskrat. This cool little aquatic mammal has some pretty remarkable adaptations that help it to survive. And based on its size, its tail, and its lodge, we can tell it's not a beaver. But best of all, if you spot a muskrat, you're probably looking at a wetland. And a wetland is a habitat type that can support countless other wild animals and our human communities as well, whether you're at the Huron-Clinton Metro Parks or at the Detroit Riverfront Conservancy. And on behalf of both organizations, I'd like to sincerely invite you out to come and visit us sometime. And whether you come here to Oakwoods Metro Park or you go to the Ralph C. Wilson Centennial Park along the Detroit Riverfront, when you get there, keep your eyes open because you just might spot a muskrat. Thank you.